Hello and welcome to the 2020 CBU Men's Basketball Virtual Tip-Off. I'm your voice of the Lancers, Braden Bell. This year is unique in a plethora of ways. We've all changed and adjusted parts of our lives, and the same can be said for CBU's athletic department. This past June, Dr. Micah Parker embarked on a new journey after 11 seasons at CBU. The Lancers were in need of a new athletic director and found someone who can help continue the rise of Lancer athletics. It's my honor to introduce you to the interim director of athletics, Ron Prettyman. Hello everyone, my name is Ron Prettyman. I'm the interim athletics director at California Baptist University. I am honored to be a part of Lancer Nation and a part of the athletics department at California Baptist. Uh, I've had the great experience of being an athletics director for over 34 years, uh, 11 years at the division one level and I am very excited about being at California Baptist. Prior to that, I worked at the NCAA, at the national headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I was responsible for 17 NCAA national championships, including the College World Series, Division I football, women's volleyball, men's and women's swimming and diving, and many others. It's great to be back on campus, be associated with young people that are striving to be the best that they can be, work with coaches and administrators, all working toward a common goal. I have a great family. I've been blessed in life, wife of 44 years, have a daughter that's a teacher in the state of Indiana and her husband, they have three boys, have a son that's a baseball coach at the University of Washington and his wife and he has a boy and a girl. So I, I am so blessed with, to have a great family that follows the Lord and is doing great work in, in their various responsibilities. My goals for California Baptist University is to help with the transition. We're in a very important part of the four-year transition and we're in year three this year. So I am I'm here to help with that, assist with that, make sure that we are on target. We've got great people all across campus working on that goal. The second goal that I have is to help with this COVID time. It's a very difficult time in our history. And so I'm, I'm working with our student athletes, our coaches and others to make sure that we're able to compete, make sure that we're able to perform following the rules and guidelines of the various uh, uh, constituencies that, that make those rules from the state, city, county, and university levels. And lastly, I'm here to help d define and identify the, the permanent athletics director. The timeline on that has yet to be determined, but I'm excited about the opportunity for someone quality to come in and do a great job as the Permanent Athletics Director at California Baptist University. There is no doubt that the preseason can be some of the toughest days for our student athletes. Whether it is the workouts, opening practices, or of course succeeding in the classroom, the grind is real. So in order to encourage our Lancer basketball players as they go through this journey, we have a special message from some of their biggest fans. Hi Suraj, we miss you. We love you and want you to have the best season. Good luck. Bye-bye. Take care. Hi Reed, just wishing you all the best for your up and coming season. Missing you. We're um, a long way away. We're not going to be able to get there to see you, but we're going to be watching from here. So we're wishing you all the best. Good on you mate. Have a crack. Looking forward to watching you play. Always love watching you play. All the best. Love you. Bye. Hi, Hi, Russ. Hi, hey, Russ. We miss you. Good luck this season. Good luck this season, CBU. CBU, go. After breaking records in their first Division I season, California Baptist did it yet again in year two. The only difference? They were even better. The Lancers' special season was highlighted with 21 wins and a second-place finish in the Western Athletic Conference. The journey had memorable road victories throughout, including wins at UC Irvine, GCU, and Seattle. And WAC Player of the Year Milan Aqua also gave the event center crowd a buzzer beater to send off a special senior class. All in all, it was a special season and something great to build off of. Heading into a new campaign, the Lancers will have a new look with 13 newcomers. With all the new faces, leadership will be important, and luckily CBU will have plenty of that, with four seniors highlighting the roster. This season, like every new one, will bring in new challenges and opportunities. The Lancers will continue to rise in year three in the Western Athletic Conference. It's time to meet your 2020-2021 CBU men's basketball team. Yeah, yeah, this is our year. Got this down once, 
got up again. Put in the work so I know we gon' win. This is for real, we never pretend. We gotta win, 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 win. It's time to meet your 2020-2021 CU Men's Basketball Lancers. From Westerfield, Connecticut, number one, Mark Carbo. From Etiwanda, California, number two, Tyree Campbell. Puerto Rico, number three, Jermaine Miranda. From Peoria, Arizona, number four, Elijah Thomas. From Sydney, Australia, number five, Reed Nottage. New York City, New York, number 10, Jordan Caruso. From Bernie, Tasmania, number 11, Trey Armstrong. From Sydney, Australia, number 12, Borjak Gat. California, number 13, Freddy Dybala. From Riverside, California, number 14, Tobin Hunt. From North Delta, British Columbia, Canada, number 15, Suraj Gadir. From Espirito Santo do Penal, Brazil, number 21, Malik Wei. From Langley, British Columbia, Canada, number 25, Ty Rowell. From Mesa, Arizona, number 32, Jelani Stone. Dallas, Texas, number 34, Russell Barlow. From San Francisco, California, number 35, Tejon Sawyer. We are joined tonight by special guest, ESPN college basketball analyst, Sean Farnham. It's pretty simple. If you're a fan of the game, you've seen his work or heard his voice. Sean calls some of the biggest games for ESPN all around the country. He's also appeared on hit shows like First Take and Sports Center. Before his days in broadcasting, Farnham played his college ball at UCLA, where he earned a full ride scholarship after starting his career there as a walk on. Recently, Sean visited CBU's campus to spend some time with the men's basketball program and see their vision for the future. Welcome everybody to the CBU Lancers virtual tip-off. Now, certainly not the way I anticipated my first trip coming out to Cal Baptist looking like, but I'm glad you're here because it's going to be a fantastic ride. We're going to talk to all the players, all the coaches. We're going to talk to Dr. Ellis about all the fabulous things he's been able to accomplish here at California Baptist University. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This is my first time coming out here. My name, Sean Farnham. I've been with ESPN for the last 11 years and I've been broadcasting for 20. I've covered every conference across the country for ESPN. Super Tuesday inside the SEC, the ACC tournament, the WCC, the Pac-12, the Big Ten. I've seen it all. And I will tell you, I've been blown away in my first trip out here. 
I did not anticipate seeing what I've seen so far. Whether it's the outstanding locker rooms, the film study rooms, the coach's office, this fantastic event center that is one of the loudest venues in the West region of the United States in college basketball. There's a lot of reasons to be excited about this program and the trajectory it's taking as it continues to progress from Division II to Division I and an opportunity to play in the postseason tournament this year with the WAC tourney and eventually the NCAA tournament. The 21 wins a season ago, the 16 before that, 37 in the first two years of being in Division I. Coach Croy has done a tremendous job building the pillars and the foundation for what this program will look like 10 to 15 years from now. Now, this is unprecedented time. As you can see, I, I walk around, there's, there's no one here but me. So pretty much I can say whatever I want to say, do whatever I want to do right now, because the global pandemic shut down the world of sports. I was in a, a very interesting position at ESPN that night. When Rudy Gobert tested positive on March 11th, I walked to the set of Scott Van Pelt, and he asked me what I thought was going to happen to college basketball. We're in the middle of champ week. Conference tournaments were just about to get underway in a lot of major conferences across the country. And the NCAA tournament was about a week and a half away. And I looked at him and I said, I think, I think we've seen our last of college basketball this year. And, and as a person who gets their employment through college basketball, that was a very difficult statement to say, but it was one that I believe because of so much uncertainty around COVID-19. Unfortunately, I was right. And then since that point in time, the world of sports has been turned upside down. The challenges that these coaches are facing at the Division I level across all sports is unique. We're a month away from the start of the season or less than a month away from the start of the college basketball season, and some teams haven't even finalized their schedule yet. The safety protocols that are going to be put into place, the obstacles that that puts in, the postponement of what we anticipate will be some games from time to time, like we've seen in college football. However, one thing has remained certain, the commitment of the coaches across the country, the commitment of a coach like Rick Croy and this staff here to provide a safe environment for their student athletes and one that allows them to continue to progress and take steps towards not only their individual goals, but their team goals. And that's going to be a big focus of tonight's event. We're going to get into these players, how they've dealt with these moments of COVID-19. And also talk to the coaching staff and how it's changed recruiting and what that might impact this program two, three years from now. These uncertain times are uncertain to all of us that don't have the answers. But they are certain for the people that are prepared. And the one thing I've taken away from my time here today is this staff, they're prepared and they're focused on the journey that lies ahead for their student athletes. I was a fortunate college basketball player at De La Salle. I grew up in Northern California. It's where I first met Coach Croy. Coach Croy was a very talented shooter and scorer at Northgate High School. It was a rival high school of mine uh, up in Northern California. He actually beat me uh, in his senior season. We played in a tournament, I believe, in Livermore, and they beat us. And I still, I'm still mad at you, Rick, for that loss. Uh, they went on to win the championship of the tournament. We played for the third place game. However, after Coach Croy law left, we got revenge the following year, my senior year. I then went to UCLA, had a good career there for four years before I started in the assistant coaching ranks at Pepperdine for a season, uh, and then got into the world of broadcasting. And that's where my, my paths crossed once again with Coach Croy. I spent a great deal of time with him. My first assignment at ESPN back in 2010 was the WCC. And that was right about the time that St. Mary's was really starting to take off. And getting to watch Coach Croy as an assistant coach and the discipline, the focus, the attention to detail uh, was so important uh, on a coaching staff that has produced multiple head coaches underneath Randy Bennett. Really blew me away to see his maturation in this business. And the coaching business has so much to do with relationships. You have to have the type of relationship that can garner the trust that is necessary to build a long-term successful program. If there's one thing that Coach Croy knows how to do, it's, it's building a successful culture through staying true to his moral compass, who he is, how he's lived his life from the time that I first met him in grammar school to the time that I know him now as a father. And I think that that's, to me, the one thing as, as, as we all grow up and we all have those life experiences of being teammates, adversaries, 
or, or being professional colleagues, whether it's from a coach to a broadcaster's perspective, it's understanding and appreciating the steps that a person takes in their journey, their walk in life. The arc for everybody isn't the same. I thought I was going to be a coach when I was at Pepperdine. Didn't turn out that way. Instead, I get to hold this microphone and talk to people on a nightly basis on ESPN, breaking down film, scouting teams, and celebrating all the positive things that we have in college basketball. And there's a lot of it. But it also allows me from a 30,000-foot perspective to look down on coaches, the best coaches in the country, the Tom Izzo's, the Coach K's, the John Calipari's of the world that have had such an immense, immense amount of success that you can sit there and appreciate what they've been able to accomplish. The Mark Fews, the Randy Bennett's, hopefully Rick, Mick Cronin, and that's my one plug for my alma mater, hopefully Mick Cronin in the near future at UCLA too. But when I look at Rick Croy, the thing that stands out most to me is that when you look at the high level of success, the, the champions in the sport, there's a thread that, that goes from point A all the way through to the end of the story. And what I would tell you this, for those of you that are watching, and, and again, first time out here, but not my first time knowing who Coach Croy is. First time being here, I felt the energy. I felt the excitement, even in the midst of a global pandemic of the, the buzz that is in the air inside this building. We went to the strength and conditioning center and the swim and diving team was working out how Coach Croy said hello to all of them. Family, culture, togetherness, things that are important. They can't be faked. Because if they're fake, you see through them really quick. To his children doing distance learning inside the office as I'm walking around. Something's happening in the Inland Empire. Something's happening here. And for those of you who are watching it, you probably already know because you've seen it more than I have. But there's a reason to be excited about not where you are today, but where you're moving forward and who's guiding the ship to get you there. Because the Lancers, they've brought some energy already. They've caught some attention of what's going on. There's people around the nation that, that have noticed the fact that there's 37 wins in the first two seasons at the Division I level. They look at the roster, they look at the talent, and they start going, certainly doesn't feel like a program that's just getting started. But the scary part for most teams is it is just getting started. And where it's going to go is going to be a fun journey. And tonight, we're going to take you on a journey of what this has been like through the pandemic, what this has been like for the student athletes, coaching staff, administration, and the vision for where it is about to go because that's the excitement, and that's what tonight is all about. Uh, Dr. Ellis, appreciate you joining us now, and you, you've been here for, for a long time. You've seen the school grow from about 800 students to now over 11,000 students. What has been probably the most gratifying part of, of this growth process for you here uh, at California Baptist University? Uh, I think just seeing the plan come together, it's been 26 years. Uh, the end of this month. So it's uh, really been great to be a part of this amazing group of people who have got, gotten into the mission, the vision, and really rolled their sleeves up and made it work. You, you know, when you think about where this campus is now, and, and look, this was my first time being out here, and it, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Yeah. Uh, but yet I, I could feel the energy, even in this empty arena. Uh, I could close my eyes. I could smell the game day smell. I could, I could hear your student section, uh, and, and it's a big part of why the program's been successful. But what is your vision for five years down the road uh, as this place has grown the way that it has in such a very short period of time? Well, we've, we've uh, developed a number of very successful programs. We'll continue to feed those and nurture them and look for selective new programs as well. But, uh, you know, we're at a size now where I think that uh, one of the best things we can do is it's like a stair step. Yep. You want to grow and fill in, make sure that you don't, you know, do spikes. And I think that we've done a pretty good job of that. We've, we've been up just about every single year during that period of time. And it's been a real solid growth. And we're trying to do that across the, the board, athletics, academics, spiritually, the whole person. 
Well, when you, you talk about leadership, I think a person in your position, obviously, it is all about leadership. It's cultivating uh, the right environment for, for those growth. So you don't have the, the spike and then the, right. the hole and, and you continue to take steps forward. What are some of the pillars of your leadership that you think have been such an essential part to the building of this community? I think first and foremost, really uh, understanding what the vision is and, and being totally committed to the vision. I think next you would then uh, bring along uh, a group of talented, passionate group of people who are hardworking and uh, people of integrity. And then I think just uh, you know seize the day, uh, really appreciate what you're doing, enjoy it, laugh at yourself, laugh often if you can, uh, and stay focused on the vision. You know, the vision can sometimes get cloudy over right. times, and maybe no time in our nation's history has it been more cloudy than it is right now. Uh, the global pandemic has certainly put a wrinkle into the educational system uh, across the country, across the globe, uh, but in particular here in the state of California, mm -hmm. even more so. I've got three young kids that are all distance learning right now. Um, what have been some of the biggest challenges for you navigating these waters in the last seven or eight months? In a word, uncertainty. Uh, when you're a person who's focused and goal-oriented, uh, certainty is a big part of being able to uh, stay focused and put your plan together and then work the plan. So I think the pandemic has, the uncertainty that it's brought has been the biggest thing. But fortunately for our university, we have built a culture of being nimble and we're committed to change. So this is a little different, but as long as we understand that we are, we are committed to change and we're very nimble as an institution, we're gonna get through this and we're gonna be even better on the other side. Uh, a lot of focus now shifts as we come out of this pandemic, or we hope that we're coming out of this, this pandemic, uh, into the world of collegiate athletics and the role that collegiate athletics mm -hmm. play. You mentioned uh, not just the educational aspect, but the, the athletic aspect, as well as the right. spiritual as aspect uh, of, of CBU and the development of the whole. Coming out of this pandemic, how do you see the world of college athletics and the importance to the co college experience uh, in particular here? I believe college athletics has a tremendous uh, ability to model for us the best of life, life lessons, uh, teamwork, uh, being focused on a goal, working together, overcoming adversity, all those types of things. And college athletics also, uh, for me, and we've really, I think, been able to accomplish this in a, in a large part at CBU, is that it, it can create a tremendously positive campus culture uh, that really br binds people together, brings them together, all different ages, all different generations, the, the, the internal campus, the students, the faculty, the staff, the alums, and the community. It's, it's been a tremendous bond for us. Uh, obviously, when you talk about the basketball world, 84% of the home game win uh, winning percentage uh, for Coach Croy here yes. uh, is a tremendous uh, accomplishment and, and a testament to everything you were talking about. <clears throat> But from Coach Croy's perspective, what do you see in him as a leader? And why was he the right guy to help this university grow from the yeah. Division II level to the Division I level and have the kind of success we've seen in just the first two years of being at that level? Rick Croy's the complete package. He's got the intellect, he's got the passion, he has integrity. Uh, he totally understands, he pursues excellence in all that he does. And back to the whole person, he truly cares about the whole person. And, and once a student athlete has finished their eligibility or moved on, he doesn't forget them. They're, they're Lancers for life and they're Rick Croy people for life. But in a nutshell, Rick Croy's got the complete package. When you uh, step back and, and you think a year from now, what you'll, what you'll see of yourself and uh, maybe of this program, but mainly of yourself and, and this university, what do you think you're gonna be most proud about? Well, I think that uh, we have tried to honor God uh, by serving our uh, fellow man f and uh, people around us. And uh, by doing that, uh, we put others before us. We live our purpose by helping others find and live their purpose. And I think that focus is really pretty true in any area of life. If you focus on other people, you will be blessed. Dr. Ellis, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Lance up. All right, now welcome in the head coach of Cal Baptist Lancers, Rick Croy. Coach, it's great to see you because uh, for, for those that are about to learn, we've known each other for quite some time. Great to have you here, Sean. It only took us about five, five years and about 15 attempts to get you here in a, in a global pandemic, but glad you're here. 
Well, my agent worked on the fees. We got that increased, so I really appreciate uh, all the support uh, that you're providing. All jokes aside, look, you and I have known each other since uh, we were pretty much in grammar school, uh, growing up in the same area. Uh, One of the things that always stood out to me was your effort. Uh, as, a, as a player, uh, as a person, there wasn't a lot that you didn't put 100% into. How do you think those early years have benefited you now uh, as, you've, as you've ascended through the ranks throughout your coaching career? I think it's helped a lot. You know, I think one of the first values that we try and teach in our program is a, a blue-collar work ethic. And, you know, I think a lot of those things are shaped at a young age. I was very fortunate to fall in love with the game at a young age and then Extremely blessed to have an incredible high school coach that you know, Frank Alaco Sr. He's had a big impact on your career as well. So a lot of things came together, and then you try and move them forward into your career. But I definitely think work ethic is one of those things that is an absolute in college basketball. Yeah, upon your graduation, I think Northgate hadn't lost a game in Northern California in three years. Of course, after you graduated, they lost to my team. So I'll take that as a win, and we'll, we'll, we'll chalk that up to the fact that you weren't at Northgate at the, at the time of that loss. Uh, obviously, you've had a tremendous amount of success uh, as an assistant coach. You've had great mentors uh, throughout the course of the race. Randy Bennett really comes to mind, obviously, for me. You and I connected a lot during my ESPN career covering St. Mary's and those great teams that you had up in Moraga. You mentioned Coach Alaco, a legend in the game of basketball at, at the prep level, uh, and even even most recently he's done some, some things at the college level as well. But how have those guys figured in to, to your success and, and the evolution of you as a coach? Well, I really think that's, that's what shapes you as a coach, is the mentorship that you've been lucky to receive. And I would, uh, you know, I would, I would compare my, the mentorship that I've been blessed with, and I would put it up against anyone. I mean, it's just been uh, a blessed journey that way from, from high school to working for John Macy at UC Riverside. Uh, right out of when I finished my collegiate playing career and then getting the chance to work for Ken Ammon at Concordia and then I think having an opportunity to be a young head coach at Citrus College and learn through mistakes and then the opportunity at St. Mary's was was amazing I mean to work for Randy to work with the staff that we were with and to coach such great players and then to get the opportunity here you you know you're kind of a mix and a blend of all the guys that you worked for and then you also have to be yourself so I mean, the mentorship has been unbelievable. Uh, much like your coaching career, many different levels you've been at, that kind of is a symbolic of, of this program. When you took over this program to now where it's at, uh, a Division I program now, the most successful uh, two-year launch of a Division I program in the history of college basketball. Uh, what does that mean to you as far as the, the immediate success you've seen and then how you continue to try to grow upon that? Well, it's an amazing platform, and I think when you look at CBU, you you, you get an opportunity to do, if you look at what Dr. Ellis has done, you get to run and be in whatever chapter, you're all in on that chapter, and this is a great chapter for us now in the middle of this transition, and the opportunity to play in the WAC tournament this year, and, and very soon, get an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, so Everything that we've been through from playing in Van Dyne at the Division II level to, you know, our acceptance into the WAC, it's, it's been amazing. And, and we want it to be emblematic of what Dr. Ellis has done here at CBU on a grander scale. Well, and that grander scale has been the emergence of this campus over the last 25 years, going from 800 students to uh, upwards of over 11,000 students, many of them pack this building on a consistent basis for you. One of the best home attendants in the West region of the United States and and your winning percentage, and you you probably know it better than I do, but I've got it down to 84% of your home games you win. How important is building the culture and creating that energy and buzz around your program with a home court like you have? Well, I think think that's the best part of college basketball. When you think back to your career at UCLA and then when you also when you're recruiting, and, and we do a lot of international recruiting. One of the reasons guys want to come over here to play in the States is the fanfare and the excitement in college basketball. And we're very lucky to be in an area where we can be the Inland Empire's team. I mean, this is a massive region, and we can fulfill that. You know, we can, we can unify a community, and that's been incredible, and it's been amazing to have this building to do that. You know, you, you mentioned it, and it reminds me of a conversation I had with uh, Rick Majerus. And I talked to Coach Majerus and said, you know, how, 
how have you always been able to find success? And this is right after his time at Utah. And he said, listen, a lot of coaches want to recruit the coastlines. I want to recruit the Inland Empire up through Fresno of California. That's where you find the toughness. That's where you find the grit. You've had a ton of success on the international level, but you've also done a tremendous job keeping home talent around this general area here and getting them involved in this program. How important is finding that balance between the international recruiting that you've had so much success with over the course of your career and also establishing the ties to this community? Yeah, I think it's really important. You know, we've recruited California well. Arizona's been good to us. Uh, Washington. I do think it's important. As much as we want to recruit internationally, we want guys from California that can help put CBU on the map, can continue to build the enthusiasm around our program. The best recruiters in our program have been our players and the experiences that they've had here and, and their ability to share those experiences has really helped us. You know, we all know and we're all aware of the fact that we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, it shut down the world of sports. How has it slowed down your development of this team with so many new faces, so many new roles to be determined as we get set for hopefully what we would anticipate to be at least close to a normal regular season schedule? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's slowed anything. I think it's exciting. You know, I think I mentioned earlier being totally immersed in whatever chapter we're writing and that the beautiful thing about coaching at CBU is it hasn't been Division One until the last two years and, and what an opportunity that is. And I, if I reflect back, we wanted to close out Division Two as well as we possibly could. And that was the first year that we opened the event center and we had an amazing team. And then we wanted to get off to a great start at the Division One level. We had great leadership, we had great players, and some of those guys have graduated and moved on and we're proud of those guys. And here we find ourselves in year three of the transition and I couldn't be more excited about the group we have uh, the chemistry, those guys really wanting to be here at CBU, uh, all in on the journey and the challenges ahead. So the new parts, perfect fit for what we're trying to do right now and exciting things ahead. You, you talk about exciting things ahead. You've mentioned it a couple times, the opportunity to play in the WAC tourney. Uh, as, as you've gone out and you've sold people on your vision of what this program is and what it can be, how important is that next chapter of getting the opportunity to play in the WAC tournament to lay down that groundwork for the ultimate goal of participating in the NCAA tournament? I think it's huge. You know, I think there's so many things that you have to do well. You gotta be able to, like you mentioned, own your home floor. Then you gotta have the toughness and the grit and the leadership to go win on the road consistently in college basketball. And then ultimately, you wanna be one of those teams that's playing their best when it counts the most in March. So to be able to get that test and see where we're at that time of year, really big for the development of our program. Uh, also a huge part of any program in the development of the program is the staff, the people that surround you. Uh, take me through your coaching staff. When you look at them, what are some of the things that, that have made this group and the cohesiveness that you have with them work so well so quickly? Yeah, we've, we've had great continuity, and then we've been able to add some new pieces that have made us even better. Uh, and I think you need both. You need continuity, and then you need new ideas and, and great energy. And, and I think our staff, it starts right there with great energy. Hardy Espria, our associate head coach, I've now coached with him nine years. Uh, it's been an amazing run. He is the ultimate competitor, an amazing communicator, and he's got an incredible story. You know, coming over from Columbia, finding his way in college basketball, building a family, setting up shop here in Riverside, it's been a lot of fun to compete with him. Then we picked up Adam Jacobson, 20-plus year veteran. He's been in six NCAA Division I tournaments, uh, brilliant offensive mind, and destined to be an amazing head coach at the Division I level. And then Jeff McIntosh, uh, probably one of the best uh, development coaches in the country, played for us here at CBU, knows CBU inside and out, uh, can make everyone around him better, an amazing leader. And then Doc Wellman, our director of operations, uh, he's kind of my right-hand man. We've been competing together for 12 years, and I don't do a thing uh, without Doc. He's got great vision uh, and, be, and has an ability to see things before they happen. I love competing with him. When you talk about that, you brought up the word family during the course of it. I know your, your, your personal family obviously is near and dear, but I know that when you 
look at your program, you see it as an extension of that family. Uh, what has made your family's transition to this, this school, especially coming from where you were at, uh, and then the players that you've embraced as part of your family, such an important central part of your leadership? Yeah, I think, you know, I got an opportunity to live in Riverside when I first started my coaching career, but I don't know if I truly appreciated Riverside until I came back married with kids. There is a true community here, and we've been able to enjoy every facet of that as a basketball program. Um, I've shared this with our staff and, and our team. I heard this actually from Chris Mack, the head coach at Louisville. He talked about in coaching, it's not about a balance. You'll never find a balance, but it should be a blend. Yeah. And that's what we've tried to do is we've tried to blend our family experience and the CBU experience, and it's become one. And I think our players feel that. They're at our house all the time. They get to see me being a dad. They get to see me being a husband. They get to be around Jamie. They're far away from their families. Yeah. So this has to be a family, and that's been a critical part of our growth. You mentioned uh, CBU, and obviously the fact that you have 37 wins uh, in the first two seasons of, of being Division One play, uh, 21 last year, which is successful no matter where you are at any level. When, you, when I say this season will be, how would you finish that? I think this season will be exciting. I really think uh, we've got a great group that is going to represent CBU very, very well. We have some young guys that we're going to build and shape into future leaders. And then we have some seniors, some guys that are new to the program, transfers that came here for all the right reasons, and they cannot wait to compete. And from the first day they arrived, I think their journey's been marked by appreciation and gratitude. And, and I think those values are so important right now in the pandemic. You gotta stay nimble, you gotta be flexible. And I think when it's rooted in appreciation, you can take on anything. And I think that's so important with our group right now. We possess that. You mentioned the transfers, obviously. When, when you do take on transfers in your program, uh, it, it can sometimes be a little bit of a roll of the dice if they're gonna make that step, if they're going to blend in the right way. Uh, when you recruit in particular transfers, how do you determine whether or not the fit is going to work? Because a lot of times when someone's transferring, and this is what we talk about at ESPN all the time, oh, they're transferring because they didn't get enough playing time. They're transferring because they're unhappy with their role. Inherently, those are things that we're talking about them. It comes back to a little bit more of that disease of me mentality, the winner within Pat Riley's book. He talks about the, the personal goals. How do you take a, acknowledge those personal goals that they may have but yet identify that they can fit into your team, your scheme, and they're not going to take away from what you, the culture is that you've built here at this program. Yeah, I think uh, those, those are great points, especially when you're recruiting transfers. And I think for us, it's getting right to the truth of the matter and telling the guys about the roles that we think are available, telling them about who we are as a program, what we're about as a university, and ultimately finding those fits. And it doesn't fit for every guy that you're talking to. But if you stay in there and you have enough Zoom calls, enough FaceTime tours in the pandemic, and both parties get to know each other well, I think you end up getting the right guys that are here for the right reasons. And I believe we have that. And, um, and they're excited, I think, to impact winning. I think ultimately we try and find the guys that want to impact winning in different ways. And I think we have that with this group. So... It's going to be fun because we're about a month out from competing now, and, and uh, the guys can feel it. Well, you, you don't have a lot returning from last year's team, but uh, you've got some great shooters. And uh, Trey and, and, and Reed did a tremendous job last year in their roles, knocking down three-point shots for you. Not a surprise, given the fact of how you played uh, growing up, your ability to stretch the defense from the outside. How do you see the, that returning core, the guys that do have experience for you, uh, transitioning now into more of a prominent role moving forward? Yeah, I think Trey and Reed are uh, so important to our journey this year. And I think, I think it starts with them being able to be consistent in practice. And I don't necessarily mean with their shooting. I, I mean more with their approach. They, they've got to come out each and every day and practice the CBU way. Yeah. And that's an all-out effort. That's all in on the team and demonstrate leadership. And that's what they've done this far, thus far. I'm excited for both of those guys. They're much improved players, both of them, 
on, on in all aspects of the game. I think they both can rebound well at their positions. They make their teammates better. They're learning a lot about defense and becoming, and I think they both can be accomplished defenders. And then you mentioned the shooting, and that's going to be huge for us. But I think more than the shooting, it's about what they bring to practice each and every day. Ty Rowell is a player that uh, has obviously went through an ACL injury last season, but he's been here from the D2 all the way through the D1 transition for you. Um, when you see a player that suffers a significant injury like that, uh, that, that need to slide over to that father role a little bit, I think, becomes ever-present. Where is he at right now heading into this season? What is your expectation for him? And how has he managed his way through an ACL injury in the midst of a global pandemic? Yeah, Ty's, Ty's got an, an amazing story. You know, he was uh, scored, I think, 21 points in our Elite Eight game, our last game at the Division II level. And we recruited him to be on this stage at the Division I level in the WAC. He suffers the ACL injury at a time when he's playing his best basketball, really coming into his own as a Division I player. And I've never seen better resolve uh, or a stronger mindset after a significant injury like that. Uh, I, I remember being with him the day of his surgery, smiling, laughing. It was, as if, it was as if he knew that he had the toughness to handle the recovery. And here we are less than a year later, and I think he's at his very best. Um, he's excited to take on the role as the leader of our program or one of the leaders of our program. Uh, he's really becoming an improved communicator, and the guy is as tough as they come. The WAC uh, figures to be as tough as it could come this year. Uh, it's, a, it's a strong conference this year in particular. You've got some new coaching down at Grand Canyon. Uh, Coach Drew comes in now, Bryce Drew, uh, who uh, famously made the shot at Valpo over Ole Miss. We always have to bring that up when you mention him. Uh, you should bring it up when you, when you talk to him in person. Uh, but w what do you, what's your vision for the landscape of the WAC this year? Yeah, I think the WAC's got some strong returning teams. And then there's, there's a lot of new blood in the league. I think people have recruited well. Uh, and, and I'm not just talking players, I'm talking about teams. Uh, Dixie State, uh, I think, is a program that's, uh, that's going to be a, a significant force in the conference. Tarleton State with Billy Gillespie. Uh, so it's an exciting conference. I think one thing that's going to be really interesting this year is, I think, dependent upon where you're playing geographically, you may be playing in an empty gym or you could be playing in a packed house. You could be playing at 5 p.m. You could be playing at 12 noon. So it's going to be the teams that are the toughest, the tightest, the most unified, who can come together each and every day. And it's going to make for a really exciting conference. Preparing for the uniqueness of the environment, because that is something that we've never had to experience in college basketball before. It's packed houses. You know in non-conference games, you go play USC, there's going to be people there. You know if you go play at Allen Fieldhouse against Kansas, it's going to be packed. You might be going to venues that have nobody in it. It might be very, very quiet. How do you work with your team for those different environments? Do you pipe in noise at practice? Do you take noise out at practice? Do, what are the, the game times changing the way that they do? It's different than a, in a normal year. So how do you prep your team or anticipating prepping your team for those changes in environment? Well, we tried to practice some of those things and we've talked a lot about it. We've talked about your habits and that you, you ultimately are gonna be your habits. Uh, but we've done some things. We put some music into practice. We've also had practices where the coaches don't say a lot. We let the players take over uh, verbally and vocally. Um, and we've also mixed up the times of practice, team meals, things like that. But I think more than anything, we've just continued to try and speak truth to the nimble nature of this journey, what it could look like if a guy's out, what's our attitude going to be. Uh, we've actually come up with uh, something that we've talked about. We call it control the uncontrollables. And the only way to control the uncontrollables is to have an attitude and a mindset that basically can't be touched by anything. Yep. I think that's it's the nimble aspect of this year, as we've seen uh, even in recent weeks, is going to be even come more, more important uh, as we move forward. Coach Croy, I'm very excited to watch your team uh, participate. My first time being on your campus, uh, first time seeing your facilities. It's really, truly remarkable. Uh, what you have built around you uh, and the direction in which your program's going. Very excited to see how this season turns out, and, and not only this season, but the next couple of years as well.
Appreciate having you in Riverside on campus. We got to get you out for a game. Thanks, Sean. Here with the fresh faces uh, for CBU, Lance says it's your first opportunity for you to see and first opportunity for you to hear from them. Let me introduce them to you. First, coming up in the driver's seat, we got Freddie. Freddie, what's up, man? How you doing? What's up? How you doing? Doing great. Tejan. How you doing? You're looking sharp today, man. Thank you. All right, let's go to Siraj. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I like the chain. I like the placement of the belt. Very solid look out of you today. Appreciate it, man. Bringing your A game. I like it. Tyree down on the end. What's up? I like the shoes. What's up? Everything going good. Uh, yep. Got some black loafers on, you know, a little something, something. That's good. I'm not talking about anyone else's shoes, just your shoes. Hey. Why? Because that's what I've been told to say. Hey, All yeah. right. I listen, learn, and apply. Hopefully you guys have as well. Freddie, let's start with you. Uh, your senior year of high school was cut short uh, based on the fact that there was a global pandemic. I can't imagine what it would be like to be a senior in high school and to lose so many of those moments down the stretch. But what was it like for you? Uh, at first, it was tough because I mean, like, we've never been through a global pandemic. So at first, you don't know really how to react. But then you start to get used to it and ready in the moment, and then you just move on because you have to move on with life. So. Tejan, what, what, what moment do you think you missed the most uh, looking back at the last eight months? Um, that we missed so far was, I was looking forward to like going to prom, you know, and stuff. Yeah. But you know, our, it got canceled. And then we had to adjust to online school, which was weird, you know, cause like, you, like Freddie said, we never been through any time like this. And it was just all adjustment. I've got a kid in high school right now, and it's a disaster, in my opinion, because the social aspect of it, I think, is a huge loss for you. So, Raj, let me ask you this. I mean, a lot of kids have felt isolated during the pandemic, and in particular with distance learning. It's probably better for you here being part of this community. But looking back to the way your, your senior year, year ended, would, would you agree with that? And what were some of the times that maybe you, you struggled with a little bit with that? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It was kind of tough for me, too, as well, um, just not being able to f finish off my senior year of high school and just adjusting to the online schooling and all that. So I definitely agree with Tejan and Freddie here. That it was a really tough adjustment. Tyree, uh, now the excitement comes to starting a new chapter and a new journey in life. And a lot of times when you've made your commitment to go play for a college and your graduation day, it's really the launching point to your college basketball career. Well, everything has kind of been put on pause at least a little bit up until the last couple of weeks to try to get to that point. Um, what, has it changed your level of excitement entering your freshman year uh, due to the global pandemic? Or, or are you, you kind of feeling like, hey, it's business back to usual now? Yeah, um, not at all. At first, um, it was a little slow start. But um, after a while, I uh, just kept working out every day and just keeping my mindset straight for the season. And I just kept having belief that we were going to have a season this year. I, I have that belief, too, because it's my entire livelihood as far as my employment goes. So let's get that done. All right. Uh, Tejon, let me ask you this. Uh, you talked about working out. A lot of your workouts, at least initially, had to be on Zoom or by yourself. What were some of the things that you focused on the most in the last eight months to try to improve? Um, before coming into CBU, you know, our coaches wanted us like to work out at home, which we had to. So it was good, like just finding some home workouts going on YouTube looking up home workouts to do so and I was like you know that was not normal because <laughs> yeah. and then like nothing all about the, this has been normal yeah and like all the public you know gyms is closed too so it was just basically you have to do stuff on your own and I think it like matured me too Freddie, uh, I, I've talked to a lot of young high school athletes and I've told them hey this is this this moment is an opportunity um, and it's unlike any opportunity you're ever going to have in your life. Because normally, right, you guys have all been through the AAU system. You all know the grind of it. You know, you finish your high school season. Then there's a live evaluation period, and you're playing 150 games over the course of, like, seven months to get ready. But everything kind of got put on pause. There's been not a lot of games. There's been almost no games. So for you guys, there's been no games. And this is the first time, probably the longest break you've had from the game of basketball in your life. What has been the one area for you that you said, you know what, this is a weakness. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to make it stronger because it's going to make me better. What has been your focal point in the last eight months? My focal point, I would say connecting with my family because we, we wouldn't have this time like in regular times. So this is a great time to just connect with my family and become closer to them. That's a great answer. Siraj, what about you? I think I agree with Freddie. And then on the court, one thing I really focused on was just getting stronger. I feel like that was one of my biggest weaknesses, so just keep improving on that. 
Tyree, you played at a legendary high school. I'm partial. I went to UCLA. You know who went to Etiwanda. You know the, the lineage that we have there. Uh, what's it like playing for that kind of program coming out of there, and, and how do you think that's helped prepare you uh, to be successful here? Um, ever since I was a kid, I always dreamed of playing at Etiwanda. I always watched the game since Darren Collison was there and Jordan McLaughlin, some of the legends there. And um, just appreciate just click for everything, just his defensive just how um, demanding he is with uh, with offense and defense on both ends of the ball, and just um, he just prepared me mentally and physically um, just for going into college. Uh, Tejon, let's go back to you. Uh, you're now here. Coach Croy's got got you got everything in the control system as far as how the program's going to work and how it's going. What has been the most uh, smoothest aspect? Let's let's start with the positive. What's been the smoothest aspect of your transition here? Uh, smoothest is you know like. Getting in, like working out, that's been the smoothest so far. Like at my high school, we worked out like kind of, but like not as much. But it's been going so it's been like going pretty good. Like working out in the mornings and then our afternoon workout practice. So that's been pretty smooth. So Raj, what's it like uh, joining a team uh, that has had so much success in the last two seasons? That's in that this transitional stage still. Uh, obviously now the first opportunity for them to play in the WAC tournament coming up this year. Uh, and then by the time you guys are out of here, you'll have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. What does that mean for you and this group that you're sitting with? Uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling to have, especially the two seasons that just came off. I was at home watching the games from last year, just seeing the guys improve every year. So I think with the group that we have here, we can keep improving. And by senior year, I definitely think that we can make the tournament. Freddie, what was it about Coach Croy that maybe resonated most with you and made you want to come here? Uh, just his passion for the game, his ability to make his team and players better. And just, yeah. What about you for you, Ty Tyree? Um, same way, his passion for the game. Um, just his, um, his teaching skills on and off the court, you know, in life and in basketball. What has been uh, maybe the most difficult challenge, and I'll go to Siraj on this one, uh, the most difficult part of starting college and doing it online. Now, you guys all benefited at least a little bit from doing it your senior year of high school, but college is a step up academically. It's a little bit more difficult. It's a different way of learning than high school. What has been the biggest challenge for you? I think one of the things is just we got to focus by ourselves. There's no one babying us here anymore. It's we got to keep focused, get our work done, and if we're not, that's just on us. It's going to hurt us the most. So just getting our work done, that's probably the most important Quick thing. thinking, quick thinking, being nimble. Probably important, right? Of course. Okay, good. Let's go with a fast break. We do this at all the uh, media days at ESPN. Uh, usually I'm at SEC media days, ACC, Pac-12, and we get all the athletes to come in and we ask them a couple of questions. We're going to start. Everybody gets the same question. So we're going to start. The first one's going to start with you, Freddie, and we're going to go down to Tyree. The second one will go to Tyree and come all the way back down. You two benefit the most because you'll always at least know the question and have a second <laughs> to think about it. The idea of this is taking you on a fast break. Simple questions. Answers. First thing that comes to mind that's appropriate to say. All right, let's start with this. Freddie, favorite food? Uh, Italian food. Um, Chinese food. Indian food. Barbecue ribs. Barbecue ribs, beautiful. All right, we'll start with you. Celebrity that you could hang out with, anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, probably Michael Jordan. Uh, LeBron James. So Illuminati. <laughs> LeBron James. All right, a couple of LBJs there. Okay, good. Best movie you've ever seen? Rocky. Ooh. Um, Fast thinking. Come on. A Hunt the House. Uh, Coach Carter. Uh, paid in full. All right. Uh, social media app of choice? Uh, for sure, Instagram. 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 Snapchat. <laughs> All right. I think I know the answer to this one. LeBron or Jordan? LeBron. Jordan. 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 There you go. All right. Uh, where do you see this program in four years when you're done? Great, great places. Um, four times WAC champion. Four time WAC champion and making the tournament. Yeah, four time WAC uh, champion and winning the tournament. All right. Big goals, big dreams, big talent in this freshman class. They're looking forward to getting back out on the floor and uh, proving their worth here at the Division I level. Thanks so much, guys, for joining me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
All right, here now with, uh, I guess we'd say the most experienced group on this team this year as far as understanding the environment and the culture of this program, given the fact that there's so many new faces this year for CBU. Uh, we've got Trey, Reed, Russ, Jordan, and Tobin out here. Appreciate you guys all joining me today. Uh, I think the first question has to be, I'll go with you, the Russ bus. All right, we're going to start with you here. Pandemic. Let's just get it out of the way so we can back, get back to talking about basketball. What's it been like, man, the last eight months being a college student here on this campus during a pandemic? Uh, yeah, it's been kind of tough. Uh, throughout the summer, it wasn't a lot of time for me to work out. It wasn't a lot of time for me to, you know, just work on my skill or anything. But I think the time with my family was most important for me during that time. And uh, I think I made most of it. So, yeah. I mean, you talk about the challenges uh, that come out of that. Jordan, we'll go to you next on that. You know, you talk about not a lot of time to work out. What was a normal routine like for you this summer versus what it would be like uh, on ev any other summer uh, for the people that, that ha don't know what life is like as a student athlete? Well, it was definitely tough not being able to get into a gym, but, uh, you know, you just got to make the most of it, you know, doing push-ups, pull-ups, all, all the, the workouts to stay in shape, running around the block, you know, ball handling in the house, all the stuff you go back to as a kid when I couldn't go. I grew up in New York, so in the winter you can't go play out in the snow, so you're in the house doing ball handling. So it's something I was used to, and I was able to adapt to it pretty easy. So you essentially you were the Jimmy Butler of the team, just dribbling the ball at all hours of the night in room, people calling on you, complaining. Is that is that pretty much what it was exactly. like? Exactly. <laughs> all right, good. I love that. I love that about you. Reed, uh, you know, look, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of experience returning from, from a season ago. Uh, you, had, you made the most of your minutes, did a great job shooting the ball. Actually, both you and Trey did a tremendous job shooting the ball from deep last year. Um, how did you stay fresh? How did you stay in your rhythm over the course of the summer to be ready to go now that we're less than a month away from the start of the season? Uh, well, I was actually lucky enough in Australia. Um, we weren't hit as bad by the coronavirus as you guys were over here. So we had a lot less restrictions. So I was able to get in the gym, um, keep getting shots up, stay fit, and just basically do the best I could to prepare myself for the season. Trey, what, when I say the last two years of this program, uh, 37 wins, 21 a year ago, uh, the culture that has been established here, what is that culture and what does it mean to you? Uh, it's something that's building and I think it obviously means a lot to me and the guys sitting here, but uh, we know that we're just the beginning and we're building something special. And we have that in mind. We're, we're not trying to settle for anything. We're trying to reach new, new heights and, and, you know, do something that hasn't been done before. So, you know, we think of, of, our, of us as, as guys that are helping build something special and, and something different. So when it kind of feels like the home court advantage here is something that is special, what makes this building in particular, the event center here at CBU, a unique environment? Um, so, yeah, I've grown up in Riverside and I've seen them uh, – grow from playing in Van Dyne uh, from NAIA all the way to Division One, and to be able to have this uh, in my hometown of Riverside and to be able to play here is pr something pretty special and uh, it's a pretty rare thing to do to be able to do that in your hometown and see something like this get put up and it's a really cool experience. We, we talk so often in college uh, athletics about that experience, the individual student athlete and, and, and the ride that you go on. I want to tap more into that. How important do you think it is for this program to not just have success recruiting some international guys, but recruiting some of those local guys as well that, that are going to grow up watching and seeing the success that this group that's sitting in front of me right now has helped building upon the, the already made success? Um, yeah, I think it just kind of helps connect like a family and a brotherhood, and that's what we're all about here um, as far as our culture is sticking together, and it, it builds that network uh, further out in the community, and uh, CBU here, they have a strong community of Riverside backing them, and uh, there's a lot of love for this team and this school and this university in Riverside, uh, and I think making those local connections is a, is a big step in helping this, this program and school grow. Russell, being a transfer yourself, you got some new faces on this program this year. What are some of the advice that you're going to give this crop of transfers to help them acclimate to the way things are done here quickly? Uh, I would just say... You know, just learn from past experiences and just try to do better. Try to, you know, think outside the box of certain situations. You know, not everything's perfect, but I would just say, uh, you know, just get it done, you know? Jordan, same question for you. 
Um, adjusting to our team was pretty tough. Transferring, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a different. It's it's a player-driven program, so they ask a lot out of the players to come out of their shell and communicate. So guys just got to be open and willing to come out of their shell and just uh, communicate to the rest of the team. Uh, Reed, uh, you know, you mentioned obviously Australia. Coach Croy has had such a long lineage of success recruiting players out of Australia. Uh, I was covering St. Saint, uh, Mary's at the time when they had Matthew Della Vadova uh, and so many of the other Aussies uh, that made that program a huge success. What is it about basketball that has resonated so well in, the, in, in people around your age? Uh, coming from Australia, because I mean, we used to think Australian football rules, and we're like, yes, just you know, guys just cracking each other out on the field. Still popular. I've got family that live in Australia right now. I've got three cousins. My uncle lives there, um, and they've lived there since 1996. But what is it about basketball and the sport of basketball that has taken off so much? Um, well, I mean, every kid, including myself, grows up playing Aussie rules. Um, it's just the sport back home, but. I think the opportunities that are over here for basketball that aren't necessarily for Aussie rules are definitely a massive factor, especially for me when determining which sport I wanted to continue playing. Um, you know, the thought and the idea of going to college and just how exciting all that is is really a big factor and why I chose basketball and why I think a lot of guys choose basketball over Aussie rules. How much of that goes back to guys like Patty Mills, Ben Simmons, uh, Matthew Della Vadova, the, the people that we're familiar with here? Yeah, no question. Their, their influence is is huge and the Australian identity in the NBA just grows with every season. So it's hard to not fall in love with the sport when you're seeing guys that come from where we come from doing things on the biggest of stages and that's a huge influence for guys like me and Reed and, and that's why the next crop of, of Australian stars are going to be really good because there's just more and more quality talent at the highest level. We talk about the, the next step. Uh, well, the next step in this journey would be that this year you get to participate in the WAC tournament uh, and then eventually the NCAA tournament potentially, right, down the road. But let's start about the opportunity to play postseason. I mean, it's hard to fathom. I think a lot of people lose sight of the fact we're talking 37 wins in the last two years without being able to play in any postseason tournament. Uh, Russ, what is it going to mean for you and your teammates to participate in the WAC tournament this year and have an opportunity to win the championship? Yeah, it's a big deal. I think uh, Coach has made uh, a pretty big, I guess, pillar of our season. Um, since it's the first time, I think it's just the next step in our, uh, I guess, legacy here at CBU, and uh, we're just excited about it. So, Jordan, you set out last year, opportunity to, to get on the floor this year, watching them win 21 games. What did you learn about this team, and how do you see yourself helping get them to the next level? Uh, watching from the bench last year, I, I noticed how hard you actually have to play on the court here to be successful, and uh, I'm willing to give it all and just fight for my team, whatever they need. Tobin, how would you describe Coach Croy? Um, let's see, I think he's a great coach. He's high intensity, but it's, uh, it's all to get the best out of you, and he wants to see you succeed and play your best, which ultimately helps the team drive and, and play their best as well. So. Yeah, the, the high intensity brings the best out of us, and uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't want to have it any other way. You know, it it brings the best out of all of us, and uh, yeah. All right, so now we're going to get to the fast break segment. Uh, I, I let you guys in on this. We're going to start here. We're going to work our way down. Then, Tobin, you're going to get the first question for number two, and we're going to work our way down. So the guys in the middle, you kind of benefit because you'll know what the question is. I'm only going to ask the question once, all right, it's to help people get to know you a little bit better. And as we go through, it's the first thing that comes to mind, okay? The first thing that comes to mind. You gotta, you're in a fast break. You don't have time to stop, jump, stop, think about it for a second. Should I shoot it? Should, no, you've got to go, and you've got to make your read. We've got to make our reads right now. You guys ready to go with this? All right, Reed, we're going to start with you. Breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Dinner. Breakfast. 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 All right, Tom, we'll start with you. Beach or city? Oh, beach. 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 All right, favorite NBA player? Tyler Herrer. Dirk Nowitzki. Anthony Davis. Lance Stevenson. Uh, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. I was really hoping you'd say Alex Caruso just so we could play on that a little bit, but that's okay. All right, uh, let's go. Favorite NBA team? Oh, Lakers. Lakers. Uh, Dallas. Yeah, Mavericks. Miami. All right. Favorite line of Coach Croy? Let's go, mate. <laughs> Compete. Um, 
Elevate. Uh, unify. <laughs> Compete. All right. Social media app of choice. Uh, Instagram. Twitter. Twitter. Snapchat. Instagram. All right. Favorite place to hang out on campus? Bedroom. <laughs> uh, the Habit. Wanda's. Uh, the event center. I was going to say the event center for sure. Yeah, see, the guys at the end, they, they kind of figured it out, guys. I mean, how do you not? Thanks to the student body. Thanks for the great games. The gentlemen down at the end, they win the prize. They were the best in fast break because they figured it out on the end. Ladies and gentlemen, your sophomores and juniors this year for the Lancers. Tyrell, it's a pleasure to get the opportunity. You're on one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody else got to do these big groups, man. You get a one-on-one. -on -one. That Coach Croy separated you for some reason. Why would he do that? Ah, uh, he wants to get me out of my comfort zone. Get you, you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you've kind of been out of your comfort zone for a little while here. Before we start about your overall journey, let's talk about where you're at health-wise. I mean, well documented here. You took an ACL injury. It's a significant injury. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you at in your recovery process, and how are you feeling? I'm um, back to 100%, but it was a, it was a long process. It's a good eight-month recovery. Um, we're getting back to... 100% now, but it, you know, take your time, and I was you know, working hard. You've been part of this this program from the last remaining Division II player on the roster yeah. uh, to now where you saw 21 wins a season ago mm -hmm. uh, and an opportunity this year to play in the WAC tournament. How would you describe the growth of this program under Coach Croy, in particular in, in your journey? Uh, we've, we've grown a lot. I think uh, we've kept the same kind of – mottos like we 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 compete we work hard we we practice hard and we really we, we shoot the ball well we do that sort of thing we defend hard and that sort of things helped us uh get to the division one level and do do good things you talk about coach croy wanting you to be a leader what does leadership mean to you uh being a point guard you know you got to do you got to do more than just make the right passes and make the right shots you've got to help the team off the floor you've got to help the team when, when things aren't going right, you know, through adversity, through COVID, I've got to help my guys stay on the right path and on the right goal that we have. Uh, you mentioned COVID and, and keeping them on the right path. A lot of new faces, yeah. a lot of new roles, uh, a lot of people that, you know, fans that are watching this of your program are going to be, I've never seen this person before. Mm -hmm. What kind of challenges has that presented for you during this period of time? It's been a it's been a challenge. Obviously, you know you got a lot of new not new faces, but we've been here since the summer, so a lot of time to build relationships, build trust with each other, and I think that's really helped us. Um, when when you look at your rehab process, maybe a blessing in disguise that there was COVID nineteen for you. I mean, mm -hmm. like you might be the only person in the country that plays Division one college basketball. It's like, hey, you know, COVID was okay because yeah. it really allowed me to focus on making sure I'm right. You're replacing mm -hmm. a player that was immensely talented yeah. from a season ago. Um, do you think it was a benefit for you to have COVID for you personally, mm -hmm. not for obviously everybody else, yeah. but for this stoppage and this pause? Like I've mm -hmm. described it as an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. It's an opportunity for me. And, you know, being able to play behind a great point guard in Milan, great leader, you know, I've learned a lot from him as a, as a player, as a leader. And I think this, obviously the injuries, it's, it's been a blessing, to be honest. Uh, be uh, for, for you guys to accomplish your goals this year, obviously the WAC tournament is there. Um, the idea of winning the WAC tournament in your first year being part, a part mm -hmm. of it is probably ever-present for you and everybody in your locker mm -hmm. room. What are some of the areas you think are going to be the most important this season for the Lancers? I think just being able to get through a lot of adverse moments as a team. You know, there's, there's COVID, and there's going to be, obviously, injuries throughout the season. So we've got to make sure everyone is prepared to play. We can't just be locked in with a certain amount of players. We've got we've to know our strengths as a team. We can really shoot the ball. We've got great length. So I think just knowing our, knowing our strengths. Uh, describe to me Coach Croy's style of coaching. It's, he's, he, he likes to compete. You know, that's, that's his main thing. You, know, you, you come into practice every day, you got to compete. You come to games, you're ready to compete. And it's, you know, it's, it's not easy, but it's, 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 a, it's a great way to play. All right, when you think of your time here, what are some of the moments that stands out most to you already that you've already experienced in your journey, not what you expect or, or hope to uh, enjoy this upcoming year? You know, in the past, obviously playing Division II, we were, got to the Western Region Finals. That was a, you know, a great, great milestone for the, for the school, for the team. 
Um, and then obviously our first year Division One was, was awesome, a great year, being able to beat New Mexico State, that sort of thing. It's great wins, great year. And then, you know, I'm looking forward to this year and, and what, what's to come. All right, time now to go on a little bit of a fast break with you. You know how this is done. You've been in the facility. You've heard uh, rapid fire, simple questions, no wrong answer. Anything you say is completely accurate and right and will not be questioned. Yeah. A lot like social media posts these days. All right, let's start with uh, fast break number one. Winter or summer? Summer. Uh, would you rather see your highlights on House of Highlights or Sports Center? Sports Center. All right, favorite basketball player of all time? LeBron James. Uh, if you weren't a basketball player would you be an actor or a musician musician uh what is your who is your favorite musician favorite. the weekend oh that's not bad i mean everything they put out they pretty much is like it's gold right now when you think about it uh favorite movie of all time paul fiction all right uh favorite coach croy line uh chips putting chips in <laughs> Perfect. Ty, welcome back to the sport. We hope that everything goes well health-wise for you and the Lancers this season, and I'm glad to see you're back at 100%. Thank you. Well, that just about does it. Got to give a big thank you to Sean Farnham, and of course to you, Lancer Nation. Sure, this season will be a bit different with the world we are living in, but I look forward to being on the call for every game throughout the season. Don't forget to visit cbulancers.com for the latest news and schedule information. We will let Coach Croy and the basketball team wrap things up. But first, I'm Braden Bell. Thanks for tuning in and Lance up. Thank you guys for joining us for the 2020 virtual tip-off dinner. Join us tomorrow night as we take on the USC Trojans in the Galen Center, being aired on the Pac-12 network at 8 p.m. Cannot wait to compete with these guys and represent all of you all year long. Much love. Lance and Lance up. up. Lance up.